I have actually been here. This year will be 35 years, so it's like half the life of the station, essentially. I've been here longer than the room we're standing in right now <laughs> because when I came here, this newsroom didn't exist yet. Some things have changed significantly, but at the core, I think we've stayed the same. You know, what's changed, obviously, is the technology. When I first came here, I had never worked at a station that had a live capability at all. That was still new technology. And we had phones in the car, and I thought that was an amazing thing, that we could use this telephone instead of a two-way radio to communicate back with the desk. Now, of course, all of you guys, when you head out on the streets, you've got... Um, telephones. You are shooting me right now on a camera that's this big. When I first started working here, I followed my husband here. He was a television photographer. They were carrying around 70 pounds of gear all day, every day. That's what Phil said. They all have back problems. <laughs> and so, so technology has obviously changed, but at the core, we still what we do, do what we do every day. We still tell stories. We still try to um, connect with people in the community. We try to stay on top of what's important in the lives of our viewers. So at the core, we're still local for you. That hasn't changed, but technology has significantly changed the way we do our jobs. Obviously, I think the most significant story I personally ever covered was 9-11. I was there for a week right after it happened. In fact, I walked out of this, I came into the building and. At that date, I came in early to work and they said, go home and get packed, you're going to New York. We drove to New York that night. I was on the air the next morning. Um, so 9-11 changed my view of how secure this country is and how vulnerable we might be. And it changed the way a lot of us, I think, look at the security of this nation. It was the start of our, of our awareness of terrorism. So I think that's the most significant story that I personally ever covered. You're the third person to say that out of five people. Third person really? to say that. Really? Yep. I bet Charles Busby was one, too. Well, Phil and then Tyler Beckham, because Tyler said he was um, the morning anchor at the time, and they were on yeah. the air, and they couldn't figure out why they yeah. weren't cutting in for their 955 cut-in. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it was a life-changing story. I hope I never have to cover anything like that again. It was very personally difficult to be there, to walk um, through the streets of Manhattan when there were no cars, no buses, no people. It was like we were in an apocalyptic movie. I don't ever want to repeat it, but I think it, it career-wise, it really helped me focus more on how our stories impact people's lives every day. Actually, my husband and I, um, I was looking at moving to Dallas, thinking about it, when we had only been here a year or two, and and um, and we, you know, we we thought this might be the time for us if we're going to move to move into, you know, in this business they say to move up, you've got to move out. But I was lucky that Channel 4 gave me a lot of wonderful opportunities because my children came along and we decided what a wonderful city to raise a family. And that's what's, what kept us here. And the city has grown. The city has become the cosmopolitan area that we were looking for. <laughs> you know, we've been so blessed to be in this community for this long and, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Um, I've talked to both of them about that. and. For them, they've never known anything else. I was on the air before they were born, and I was on the air here at this station before they were born. They're now grown. My son has been married for five years. My daughter is 31, he's 32. So they don't know anything else but me being in this job. I think sometimes they, when they were little, it was hard for them to understand why strangers were stopping and talking to me, and, um, but then they kind of, you know, again, they grew up in it. It was very difficult. I worked very hard to be an attentive mother and be a, a someone who worked every night. You know, I would go home on my dinner hours and help them with homework, and, and I would do everything I could to go to their sporting events and school events. So um, I think any working mom would give you the same story. It's a matter of balance. It's a matter of giving your kids time and attention. And I think we worked it out pretty well. This is a newsroom. I, I can't, let me think if I have a specific story. You know, we have a lot of fun in this newsroom, as you know. There's, there, um, 
people talk about, oh, my work family. It really is a family atmosphere in this room. And there have been so many times that I've just, you know, had side-splitting laughter uh, at some of the things that people do. My buddy, Mike Bowersock, used to just crack me up when, you know, he would send us back funny tapes and clips and he would write things into stories. And, um, you know, we've had a lot of good, deep friendships here. We've been through highs and lows in each other's lives. We've had deaths, we've had births, we've had weddings, we've had funerals. Um, life, life has been pretty full for me in this room. I've been blessed to be here. What do you hope? Next 70 years? Yeah. I, I, you know, I think technology is going to be so completely different. You know, we're coming to people now on their smartphones, on their watches. Where, you know, it's like Dick Tracy time in this newsroom. <laughs> so uh, um, I hope that no matter how things change, what we continue to do is tell the stories of the people of Central Ohio. I've never met anyone that I didn't think they're a potential story. They have a story to share. Everyone has a story to share. And I hope we just keep doing that.